Yes, Stella and Nana. And we work with Black Canadian Women in Action, BCW, for the Research Got Talent competition. One of the pertinent issues faced by the Black community is the adultification of Black girls. BCW is an NGO that empowers and inspires Black girls and women to strive for greatness. Their mission and their value hit close to home, and this is one of the reasons why they were our NGO of choice. We heard so much from some of the Black girls we spoke to doing our research, particularly how they felt they received harsher treatments compared to their white peers because adults treated them as older than their age. When working on the research, we realized that there is limited research on adultification bias in Canada. Most of the girls who experience this don't know the time for it, and the adults don't know much about it either. It is relevant to BCW as they curate specific programs to help the girls overcome this. Change starts with us. Change starts from within the system. We hope you enjoy our presentation. Hello, Nana. Hi, Estela. Welcome to this interview. We are thrilled to have you here as the winners of RGT 2022, winners in Canada this year. And we are excited to get to know you both a little bit more and also get a, an, an overview of your project. So the floor, is, the floor is yours. Please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit more about you. Hi there. Hi, Paula. Hi, Stella. Uh, my name is Nana. and. Um, I've been a research professional for six to like, uh, seven years now, uh, doing all kinds of research, um, and um, being part of this 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 uh, this research has been has been a blessing to me. Uh, it's allowed me to use my skills. Uh, I have a master's degree in natural resources management, and I work with a company called Goose Consultant, working as a senior market researcher over there. Yeah, so this was another good opportunity for me to apply my skills with the with the research. Hi Paula, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. My name is Stella and I'm from Nigeria, but I'm based uh, in Canada. And um, I've been a research professional for over five years now. Um, I currently work with Proxy as the senior research manager. And I was so glad to have participated in this competition. You know, it allowed me to really give back to my community and you know, support things that matter to me. So um, yeah, so glad to be here today. Thank you. Thank, thank you guys for being here. And my first question would it be, was it easy for you to agree on the topic of adultification of black girls? Or and was it easy to find an approach to this topic? How did you manage? Okay, so um, it was pretty easy though. Um, we both work um, uh, in the church uh, as teens co uh, coordinators in church, uh, church for uh, Christ Tomasi. So that's where we actually met, though. So we 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 had we had the opportunity to talk to a lot of teens, and some of the topics that came up uh, was how they were treated in school and how they were treated as being more uh, adult-like, um, where they are expected to do more. Uh, so we realized that this is this is a, a different topic. So we respected the LGT competition. We went to BCW and we're trying to figure out exactly what to do uh, pertaining to a research and. One of the program coordinators called Elise Selly brought up adultification bias, and uh, we realized that this is more or less like a prevalent um, uh, issue among black girls in school. So we decided, okay, this is this will be a good opportunity for us to look into this, right? So we discussed it amongst ourselves, and it wasn't it wasn't really difficult at, at all. We just figured, okay, if this is something that's happening. A lot of people don't really know much about it. Even the girls that we spoke to, they didn't know the term for it. Uh, but we have been exposed to different kinds of articles and uh, research pertaining to this issue. So we're able to tell them, okay, this is what it's called. It's called identification bias. So we figured it would be a good idea um, uh, to talk about it uh, and also research about it. Yeah. Uh, Stella, if you have anything to add. Yes, absolutely. Thanks, Nana. You know, I was just going to say that we we actually wanted to use this opportunity to tell stories, to tell the lived experiences of the girls. You know, it's one thing to for people to know about it, but it's one thing for you to talk about it, for people to understand where they're coming from. So that's why, you know, it was very easy for us to align on the approach. We wanted to use it, you know, use the platform to tell some of the stories. So that's why we chose a, a qualitative approach. We also wanted to understand if perception had a role to play, if adults perceive black girls or white girls differently. 
without us telling them exactly what we are doing. We wanted to understand what role perception played. And that's where we brought in the quantitative survey. So it was a combination of both the quants and the call part, you know, to brought to bring a very robust, you know, rich um, pro, um research and um, result findings for us. So it was, you know, pretty easy to align on it. You know, most times if I'm not nagging Nana on the best um, dish or, or recipe from Africa, we are aligning on, on this project together. So it was really, um, it was really easy to align on, on both um, on both strategies for it, yeah. Indeed, you did a great job because you compiled almost, a, I think it was 400 Canadian residents for the yes. quantitative approach, yes. uh, which is such a big number for an issue that a lot of people don't, don't really know about it. So, and um, you didn't only do a quantitative research, but also a qualitative research. Did you yes. find it hard? to find victims who wanted to help you uh, on this project? Uh, so I would say that it was a bit um, difficult in terms of um, recruitment because we were talking to young girls and, you know, obviously like in research, for ethics and for standards, you have to receive consent from the parents and legal guardians. So we had to make sure that was in place. But thankfully, we were really supported by BCW, CEO Jean and the team. You know, they helped us to get black girls that were willing to speak and we also received consent from their parents and legal guardians and even for the quantitative survey the 400 canadian you know that we wanted to you know survey you know uh, maru and logic group and proxy also supported with panels you know with giving us the programming platform with the panels you know the amount of people wanted to reach out to so i think well it was a bit challenging, but I think um, I would really say that we were supported on every side. We had maximum support from these organizations that helped us to get, you know, the, the, the people that we need for the project, yes. Wow. And uh, regarding the main challenges, what would you say you, you found the hardest? Uh, the main thing had to do with time, the issue of time, um, having to juggle different things together, right? Because um, we both have families and we have kids and uh, they are very young too. Uh, and these kids usually come with a lot of, uh, they need a lot of attention. So figuring out how to put it all together and we also have careers as well. So finding time uh, to do all these things because we had to attend a lot of meetings, especially with BCW executives um, to actually plan and figure out how to put everything together. We also had had to do uh, send emails back and forth with uh, Maru and Logic Group pertaining to all the sampling and the modeling and the programming and everything. So it took a lot of time. So time was also one of the major uh, challenges there. And also, we wanted to do um, um, the focus group in other places too as well. So we did not have an, uh, enough time to do all that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Astella, if you, do you have anything to add to that? Yes, thanks. And I would just say also, um, during our research, we found out that there was limited, you know, research on this topic. And I think that, you know, that was something that we took as a learning because it felt like this could be lay a foundation for other researchers to build upon. So I would say that that also posed a challenge because we didn't really see much done in Canada. Uh, we had to really try to figure out a lot of things and our own try to research outside of Canada and US and other countries and see what it looks like, you know, and see what the results and how they position their research, you know. So I would say that that limited research you know, on this topic was something that we, we realized was, was there. And we took it as a learning, you know, maybe after this, we can build upon it. Other researchers can build upon it. So I would say, you know, that that also, you know, posed, posed a bit of challenge, but eventually we're able to overcome those, those challenges. Yeah. Yeah. But despite of all of this, you have done a really big and impressive job. So Thank congratulations you. to both of you, because you. As, as we were saying at the beginning, it's not only something that affects the victims, which of course yeah. uh, it affects all these young black girls, but also the community as a whole, right? Because yes. right now all the communities are moving forward, having a multicultural community, and this harms that. Why yes. would you? How would you explain this effect? The effect it has towards the community as a whole. So having a multicultural community, it's, it's very key. That's what uh, Canada has been all about, uh, 
since it uh, came together um, due to their history with respect to settlement and immigration. So multi multicultural community is very, very key to, to progress. Uh, it allows people to live in their originality and also promote open-mindedness and it helps to uh, dispel certain negative stereotypes. So these girls, when they grow up like that, it might affect their confidence. Uh, they might grow up with low self-esteem and then they might feel that there are certain people out there who may not like them. So for instance, and I'm to, like for instance, if you have if you don't have a multicultural community, right? Um, we can look at an issue like racism. Uh, people might see other people from different races and groups, and they might not know much about them, but they might have certain stereotypes uh, that they know of pertaining to those people. But if you don't relate to them, you might not know exactly who they are, why they do what they do, why they think the way they think. So having a, a, a multicultural uh, community is very key. And these girls too, if they grow up thinking that there are certain groups out there who treat them in a particular way, it might affect their ability uh, to trust other people from different groups. It also affect their ability to contribute effectively in their community. Yeah, the, one of the, I would say that one of the biggest step is to raise awareness of the issue. And that's what exactly what you have done. That's the, I would say, the main part to fight against all these stereotypes and which are, are super harmful for these young girls. So Absolutely. thank you, thank you, Stella. Thank you, Nana. Also, I want to say thank you to the NGO we work with, Black Canadian Women in Action, and also to the uh, local association that you worked with. So thank you so much. So th thank you, Paula. Um, we, we also wanted to take this opportunity to, to really thank Esomar, you know, thank the organizations um, that, that supported us, Maru Logit, and, and of, of course, BCW, and even the Canadian Research Insights Council, you know, for helping us to be able to give back to the society, helping us to create awareness of something that is so important, you know, and, and, and so beneficial to the community. And most importantly, can help BCW to create relevant programs to help you know affected girls in overcoming these kind of issues. So thank you so much.